Before building any structure, it's important to build on a strong foundation. If the first part has problems, then the whole structure is at risk. Make sure the cornerstone is right and you'll have a strong structure that won't easily fall apart. That's why they say Christ is the chief cornerstone and everything should be built on him. But the same goes for any idea or belief. You have to stick to the truth, not lies. A faulty start will lead to a weaker belief structure that someone can easily bring down or it will naturally fall down on its own. The belief that Gog and Magog in the Bible is Russia is a silly one. It lacks any credibility in truth. Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 offer one of the most remarkable but difficult to comprehend predictions in the Bible. These chapters foretell of a northern invasion of Israel that will arrive like a storm and cover the land like a cloud. Israel will appear to be doomed, yet God will intercede in this attack. Because we are told that the invasion of Gog will take place in the latter years or days, this prophecy could be fulfilled in the first part of the tribulation. This is because the Antichrist will have a solution to the Middle East dilemma and will sign a seven-year peace deal with Israel during the tribulation. The Jews will be able to rebuild their temple and live safely in their land at this time. The invasion will thereafter take place. I don't know how the idea has lasted this long. I still see many video channels still bringing it up as truth. And they also combine it with talk about the tribulation, which is the belief that a seven-year period coincides with Gog and Magog. But there's nothing in the Bible that states that. This war of Gog and Magog, uh, I know that Josephus, the Jewish historian, identified that area as the area of the Scythians where they lived, which is really modern day uh, Russia. Uh, it really includes the Ukraine or includes Ukraine rather. And uh, so really you've got Rosh is Russia and part of Russia being uh, Magog and all that just really fits. And most scholars today, Billy, uh, are pretty united on the fact that Magog does include uh, Russia and at least uh, parts of the former Soviet Union. If you notice anyone who brings up this discussion about Gog and Magog, they never use Bible verses to aid their discussion. They merely just read the Bible about Gog and Magog and then make the rest of it up. There's simply nothing in the Bible about Russia or a country being Gog and Magog. To understand Gog and Magog and the event, it's pretty straightforward. So let's begin by clarifying the timeline. The timeline is important. You can't just put part of the picture together. You have to have the complete picture and then all your structure or your belief system will be fully intact. The inclination towards the theory about Gog and Magog being Russia stems from the belief that Israel is already gathered back in their own land. So naturally, people think Russia will eventually attack Israel. But Israel, Russia, and what the Bible says are two different things. It's, the Bible is not about countries. They are about nationalities or bloodlines. It's crucial to pinpoint the specific scriptures that discuss the gathering of Israel because that is the timeline. You have to understand the timeline before you can go any further. Gog and Magog comes after Israel is gathered. So let's find scriptures that state exactly what I'm saying. So let's start by reading Mark chapter 13, verse 26. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from the uttermost parts of the earth to the uttermost parts of heaven. In Mark, Yeshua talks about his coming, and he's going to come with clouds and great power and glory, symbolizing his triumphant return back to earth. Following this, the angels are sent to gather the chosen elect, or Israel, from the four corners of earth to place them back in their own land, indicating Israel would be gathered, not Christians. I know many Christians believe that Christians will be gathered when Christ comes back, but there's no such thing in the Bible. It only talks about Israel being gathered. And to confirm this, let's read Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So we see in Isaiah, it says the same thing, that Israel will be gathered. Or the New Testament just says the elect, but it hasn't changed. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 8. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth. And with them, the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travails together, a great company shall return thither. 
So in Jeremiah, it confirms what Isaiah and Matthew and Luke and Mark all talk about this gathering of Israel or the elect, whatever you want to choose, but it's all the same thing. They will be gathered from all over the earth and brought back home. A great company or a great number will return. We can simply see that Yeshua is talking about Israel as we read in Mark. The key is Yeshua, after his return, will send the angels to gather Israel. So if Israel can't be gathered in their own land until his return, how can they be gathered already? It doesn't coincide with what the Bible says. And that's all this channel is about. What does the text say? The next thing to understand is who is Gog and who is Magog? The only way to figure this out is what will Christ do when he actually comes back? What will he accomplish? Matthew 25 verse 31, when a son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. It's the same thing in what we just read. Then shall he sit upon his throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. When Yeshua returns in his glory, the angels will come with him, and he will be seated on his glorious throne, and all nations shall stand before him, and he shall separate them one from another. All bloodlines will be before him, and he will separate them. Although we like to believe we can tell which nation belongs to which nation now by looking at them, it's impossible for us to do that. But Christ or Yeshua will be able to do it without blinking an eye. It will be easy for him, as simple as separating sheep from goats. That's how easy it will be for him, but impossible for us. And Israel will inherit the kingdom as it was intended from the foundation of the world. But they failed at this. They were always supposed to possess the kingdom. But they failed because they refused to execute the Most High's judgments on the earth. So he removed the kingdom from them. Matthew chapter 21 verse 43. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. The kingdom of heaven, which is the rulership of the earth, was taken from Israel and given to other people, other nations of bloodlines and rulership. And that's the people who are now ruling the earth. It's not a country or a landmass. It's people or a bloodline, a family. Revelation chapter 11, verse 2. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And when you combine that with Luke chapter 21, verse 24, they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So they all say the same thing. The Most High was going to take the kingdom from Israel. And you combine that with Luke. They shall be led away captive into all nations. And it was given to the Gentiles. And on the Luke, it says they will trample Jerusalem for a certain time. And Revelation says the same thing. The holy city shall they tread underfoot for 40 and two months. Important if you're going to read the scriptures to understand the text, you have to combine all the relevant scriptures. The kingdom of heaven shifted from the Israelites to the Gentiles temporarily. When Christ returns, he will re control the ship of the earth and restore rulership to Israel. Israel will occupy their land and all nations will return to their designated territories as intended by the Most High. Each nation, including the Egyptians, Persians, and Hamites, all will be put back in their own land and in their rightful places as the Most High originally intended. Gog and Magog is not just a landmass. They represent a bloodline of people. Let's read Genesis chapter 10, verse 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them sons were born after the flood, the sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tiras, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Ripfath, and Toragama, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, and Kidah, and Dodam. These were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his own tongue and after their own families in their nations. Genesis chapter 10 verses 1 through 5 outlines the genealogy of Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Following the flood, it lists the descendants of Japheth which are Gomer, Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tyrus. 
The passage then details the sons of Gomer, and it lists them all out. It concludes by stating these descendants led to the formation of the various Gentile nations, each distinguished by their own language, families, and land. For this discussion, we focus on verse 5. Everyone was separated in their own land by their families and by their language. They had different languages and they were according to their bloodlines or families. Families and nationalities are the same thing. So when Christ comes back, all these nations will go back to their own land. When we read in the end that Gog and Magog will be deceived by the devil and rebel, it means that the families of Japheth will rebel. They will be back in their own land and after the thousand years rebel. Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against them, and say, Thus saith the Most High thy Elohim, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thy army, horses, and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togama of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. After many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people, against the mountains of Israel, which have always been waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely all of them. Verse 11, And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely all of them, dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates. In Ezekiel and Revelation, chapter 20, I didn't read it, but you can go and read it. It states the same thing about Gog and Magog. And when this event will happen after the thousand year reign, Gog and Magog will be deceived to come against the children of Israel. You should see that all the names that match in Ezekiel that are going to come against Israel, it uses the terms Magog, the chief prince of Tubal, of Meshech. You see all these names matching what we read about the descendants of Japheth. It's not talking about Russia or a landmass. It's this bloodline, when they are set back in their own land, will come against the Israelites that are gathered. So to sum this all up, very simply, Gog and Magog cannot come against Israel until Christ returns. Israel is gathered in their homeland. The thousand years of rain have occurred, during which Israel would be dwelling safe. Verse 11 says, them that dwell safely and are at rest. There goes the theory about the tribulation discussion. When Gog and Magog comes against Israel, many people believe that the world would be in distress. That whole idea of the great tribulation and most people's discussion about that are all wrong. During this time period, all nations will be returned to their homeland. So to think that it's Russia doesn't make sense. There will be no such thing as a Russia at this point. There will be no such thing as America. These land masses and these country names will no longer be in existence. Everybody will be known by their family. You will not need somebody to tell you what your bloodline is. It will already be determined. So you, when we look at Gog and Magog, we can't look at a landmass. During the time of the kingdom or the thousand year reign, there will be different people living there. It will not be a country that rebels. It will be a bloodline, the sons of Japheth. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.